The most basic use of the unit is simply proceeding present position direct to any point you want. Now granted, you may have to, to search and find a point in the database, but typically most of us know the identifier of places of interest that we're going to because we've been there before, we've looked it up on a chart. So there's no need to ever call up a particular point in the database if you want to go there. Instead, just hit direct and type it in. So here I am at Fresno. Let's suppose I want to go to Denver. K D E and there it is. Okay. Enter. Verify that that is the proper airport. Enter again and it changes and makes the leg present position direct to Denver. Any airports in the continental United States that have only letters in their identifier must be preceded by the letter K in the alphabet. Now if the airport has a number or numbers in it, such as 2 Quebec 3 for example, then you don't need and, and the unit will not accept the K in front of that. Let's go direct to 2 Quebec 3. There it is. I must have been there recently. The unit remember that, so once I put in the two, it presumed the rest I wanted was two Quebec three. Enter once, verify that's where I want to go. Yeah, let's go up to Yolo County Airport and visit our friends at Woodland Aviation. Again, a new leg is being made. When the split screen is split, NAV 5 is, is rather a useless display being so small, and so you will not see names of waypoints there. You may see numbers representing the number of a particular waypoint in the flight plan, but that's at the most what you'll see. Another feature I can demonstrate to you, I think, is about nearest airport search. Anytime we have an emergency, need to find the nearest airport. Like most units, there's a quick shortcut to do that. In this unit, it's hit the message button, followed by the enter button. By doing those two steps, message followed by enter, automatically the right side of the display went to the airport chapter page one actually it's a modified page one and shows that Mather Airport is the NR1 nearest one now that modified page one shows the longest runway and the surface of it to make a decision whether that's worthwhile perhaps to to glide to and by the way at our fast speed that's no longer the nearest one it's now the second closest one Pilot controlled lighting, LPC, and the bearing to it and the distance to it. So hopefully we never have a double engine flame out, but if we did, that quick way to decide if that's the proper place to glide to makes some sense. Now if I pull out the scanning knob and turn it, the fifth closest airport is Lincoln, six McClellan, seven Sacramento Exec, eight International, nine Franklin if I go back the other way the closest one is Cameron what it's trying to show you and not having much luck here let me increase the mileage scale on the left is that if that airport is one that that is in view of the small map it shows you where it is so see the little plus symbol right behind our airplane that's where Auburn Municipal Airport is relative to me right now slightly behind me to the left there Cameron right behind me. See the plus right behind the airplane? So whatever this location is, if it shows up within the, the screen dimension, the scale we have, it will show you where it is. So not only do you have to mentally think where this is relative to your position, you see it on the screen. The second half of our presentation will deal with flight plans and GPS approaches, which is a unique type or section of a flight plan. It will also touch lightly on SIDS and STARS. I have the unit as if we have initialized it at Santa Rosa Airport in California. Uh, NAV2 showing present position and right side showing the frequencies for Santa Rosa Airport. Let's take a look at the active flight plan. It was a simple two leg or two waypoint one from Fresno to Santa Rosa. Well, let's suppose that I want to leave Santa Rosa and go to John Wayne Airport in Southern California. So Fresno is no longer necessary. Let's clear that out and then move the cursor down below Santa Rosa and add K 
S and A. Now rather than start the unit moving for simulating the flight, I can achieve what I want to achieve here just uh, using it as if we're still stopped at Santa Rosa. But pretend now that we were on this flight and perhaps uh, weather was a bit worse than forecast and we're getting flight following from center, but we decided to go ahead and, and turn that into an IFR uh, request. And the, the request comes back that we are cleared via an IFR routing, which involves present position direct to Lake Hughes VOR and then Victor 459, which is the direct shot from Lake Hughes to Seal Beach VOR and then to Santa Ana. Now there are many ways we can modify this flight plan to insert those two waypoints, Lake Hughes and Seal Beach. Let me show you one suggestion. As soon as we receive that clearance, direct to Lake Hughes, start flying that way. So rather than entering at this point, simply hit direct and put in Lake Hughes. L H S. So now we can turn or have the autopilot turn and start flying this bearing of 121 to Lake Hughes and it, it lets us immediately start complying with this clearance and give us time now to worry about modifying the flight plan. Well, Lake Hughes is the active waypoint. Remember, that anything in the right side will pop into the left appropriately if we simply hit enter. So I could move the cursor to the point where I want to insert Lake Hughes and type it in LHS, certainly that would work, but the shortcut is simply enter and it's there. Now when we get to Lake Hughes, the flight plan will continue and go from waypoint 2 to waypoint 3. Aha, but waypoint 3 should not be Santa Ana Airport. It needs to be a Seal Beach VOR to comply with the clearance. So let's just type it in, SLI. Yes, it's a VOR in the USA. Yes, it's Seal Beach. So now we're going to Lake Hughes. When there, a leg change will be made to Seal Beach when there are a leg change to Santa Ana. And of course, uh, near Seal Beach, we'd expect to get some radar vectors for the approach to Santa Ana.